Hello everyone. Namaste, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Well, it is late afternoon here in Nepal. It's GMT plus 545. Hope you all are doing good. This is Suresh Gautam, a civil engineer and DRR professional from Institute of Himalayan Risk Reduction. And I'll be your host for today's session. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all uh, on our very first session of our second webinar on disaster risk reduction. The theme for today's webinar is flawed early warning system in Nepal, where we will be talking about the ground experiences and number of initiatives that has been ongoing. On behalf of the organizing team, we are really grateful to our speakers who will be sharing us with their insights and healthy experiences. So we'd like to welcome our speakers. Our first speaker is Mr. Rajendra Sarma, sir, from Department of Hydrology and Meteorology. Similarly, we'll be having our second presentation from Mr. Santos Dahal from World Vision International Nepal. The session will be moderated by Assistant Professor Dr. Basanta Raj Adhikari from Institute of Engineering, Tribhuvan University, who is also the visiting scientist of Institute of Himalayan Risk Reduction. It is indeed an honor to have insights from our distinguished speakers. Also, we would like to welcome all of our participants who are attending this session. We are very much pleased to share that we have received overwhelming responses for this webinar as well. Well, we have had more than 150 registrations on our previous webinar. Well, for today's, uh, for today's webinar, we have more than uh, 200 registrations throughout the globe. So to address this request, we are going live on our social media page of Institute of Himalayan Rigs Reduction. So we'll be receiving the queries and feedback from our Zoom chat box, as well as from the social media live stream. This webinar on disaster risk reduction is organized by Institute of Himalayan Rigs Reduction. We believe this webinar on disaster risk reduction is just a beginning and we will have a long way ahead. So let me share some brief introduction regarding the Institute of Himalayan Risk Reduction. Institute of Himalayan Risk Reduction is a research institute established with an objective to assess and understand the risks to contribute for the sustainability. Complying with the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, IHRR envisions to understand the risks and application of interdisciplinary knowledge with SETI, science, engineering, technology, and innovations to contribute for risk reduction and bridging of academic research with professionals and policymakers for sustainability. Our team constitutes of professionals with exp uh, expertise and experiences in the field of disaster risk reduction, in understanding the risks, conducting academic research and field level implementations in Nepal and across the globe. So far, we have uh, successfully accomplished a transdisciplinary project that is landslide risk assessment on the Sino-Nepal road corridors we have collaborated with local government to bring out UAV surveying of Hetora sub metropolitan city for the first time. Similarly, we have had a quite a number of engagement in COVID-19 response from developing swab, develop, uh, swab collecting uh, booth to medicine carrying robots. Besides, we are also advocating the recently promulgated DRRM Act 2017 and trying our best to collaborate and contribute. So this much for the introduction. Now I would like to uh, share some house rules for this webinar. Uh, the audio and video of the participants uh, will be switched up. Uh, for any queries, the participants can write up in their chat box or in the comment section of our live streaming uh, on our Facebook. Similarly, the waiting rooms has been enabled. And uh, so for, without any uh, delay, I would like to move on with our session. And may I request Dr. Basantaraj Adhikari to proceed with for, uh, pro, to proceed further with his moderation. Over to you, Basanta sir. Uh, thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Thank you, Suraj uh, Gautam, for your uh, very marvelous starting of this uh, webinar session on flood early warning system challenges and opportunities in Nepal. Uh, so today we are going to listen and discuss about uh, the government initiative, how the government is responding on this flood early warning system, and then what are the practices that we are doing at the community level uh, from two eminent experts uh, from Nepal who are working more than a decade 
uh, in this field. So I'm going to moderate this session. Um, first, we will have a presentation from both of our experts, and then uh, we'll have a Q&A session. But in the meantime, if you want to ask any question, you can just write in chat box uh, direct to the uh, presenter, or if you want to ask any general question or discussion, you can just write over there and I'll go through it, all these, uh, your questions and comments, and then we'll discuss. So the first speaker uh, of today uh, is Mr. Rajendra Sarma. He's a senior divisional hydrologist in a department of hydrology and meteorology, government of Nepal. So Rajendra Sarma is a senior uh, hydrologist in the government, which is the uh, prime organization to manage all these floods, early warning, and other meteorological uh, activities in Nepal. So he holds master's degree in geology from the Central Department of Geology TU and master's degree in disaster management from Graduate Institute of Law Policy Studies to Kyo Japan. He has more than 17 years of experience in water related disasters, general hydrology, advanced hydrology and early warning system. And he's one of the good colleagues that we can count for sustainable risk reduction in terms of flood, early warning and flood management uh, in this country in Nepal. So today he is going to present early warning systems for flood risk mitigation in Nepal. So welcome Rajendra Sarma sir, please you can start your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Basanta sir. Mm. Okay, I'd like to share my presentation first. Okay, can you see this? Can you see, can you see my presentation? Yes, yes. sir. Okay. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Institute of Himalayan Risk Reduction for this opportunity. Uh, and I'd like to welcome all the participants uh, here. So I would like to start my presentation, which is the title of my presentation is Early Warning System for Flood Risk Mitigation in Nepal. Uh, as Basanta sir uh, introduced me briefly, I'm Rajendra Sarma, Senior Division Hydrologist from the Department of Hydrology and Metrology, uh, which is located in Kathmandu. So talking about the flood disasters, uh, most of the disasters in Nepal are related with flood, landslide, and also earthquake and other, other disaster come uh, behind them. And by looking at this, these uh, figures and facts, what we can see is that flood and landslide disaster, they are dominant disaster, which occurs every year in Nepal, um, and which cause the loss of life and property. And th this, this is the, uh, these two charts are from, the chart are from 1992, 2014, and this is uh, this shows from the 2017 and 2018. And this is in Nepali. I'm sorry. This is the recent recent uh, figures, uh, which was given by the uh, National Disaster Risk Reduction Authority. Um, and this also shows that uh, the loss of life and property due to landslide and flood is uh, very uh, dominant in Nepal. So, uh, talking about the flood risk management, uh, there are two approaches to manage the flood risks. Uh, one is to take the people away from, uh, to take the flood away from the people by using engineering practices. And another is 
to take the people away from the flood, which is early warning system and awareness. So today we are talking, uh, we'll discuss about the second, second approach uh, for the flood, flood risk management. So early warning system is recognized internationally and nationally. Uh, this, uh, from this figure, we can see that uh, the cross-cutting issue uh, of, I'm sorry, the cross-cutting issue of sustainable uh, development goal, uh, climate change ad adaptation of UNFCCC and uh, disaster risk reduction of Sendai framework, they, they all have uh, intersection, uh, which is uh, reducing vulnerability and enhancing resilience. And one of the element of this uh, reducing vulnerability and enhancing resilience is identify, assess, and monitor disaster risks and enhance early warning sy system, which, which is clearly spoken in Sendai framework priorities. Talking about the Nep Nepalese context, uh, Nepal government of Nepal have also given uh, priority for disaster risk reduction. Uh, for disaster risk disruption, uh, uh, including early warning system. There are many acts, regulation, strategies uh, in place uh, for, um, for this disaster risk reduction. So, early warning system have uh, four pillars, as uh, many of us know, uh, four elements. Uh, one is risk, risk knowledge, Second one is monitoring warning service, and after that information dissemination, and finally response capacity. So all these four elements should be in place and should be functioning well for, for the better, better early warning system. In all these four elements, uh, the responsible uh, institution, responsible people may be uh, different uh, for the, uh, example, for risk knowledge, the responsible uh, may be national and local government, NGOs, INGOs, academia, experts, etc. Similarly, for monitoring and warning services, responsible uh, person, other, responsible institution may be uh, Department of Hydrology, Metrology, and local government. In case of Nepal, these two uh, institutions are uh, responsible for monitoring and warning service, mainly uh, Department of Hydrology and Metrology is responsible and for, for small scale uh, rivers uh, in the community level, uh, local government is also uh, responsible. And for information dissemination part, uh, Department of Hydrology, Metrology, Ministry of Home Affairs, National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Authority, National Emergency, Emergency Operation Center, District Emergency Operation Center, uh, these are and media are responsible for the dissemination of uh, early warning. Uh, and for response capacity, Ministry of Home Affairs um, and security personnel like uh, Nepal Army, Armed Police Force, um, Nepal Police, uh, and various task forces that has been developed uh, in local uh, community, they are responsible. Uh, for uh, response capacity. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, all, the, all the institutions and uh, persons who, has, who are responsible for each um, element, they, they should be uh, robust for the, for the uh, implementation of uh, early warning system, system, successful early warning system. So early warning system in Nepal uh, developed from late 1990s, uh, talking about flood early warning system. Uh, in, the, in the beginning, uh, in the early days, uh, the, the, there was uh, community used an observation tower. They used to build a big tower uh, so that the people go up in the tower and look towards north. Because uh, in Nepal, most of the river are flowing from north to south. Uh, the people look towards north and they inform the uh, community uh, in the south uh, for the flood early warning and dissemination path. So this is how 
uh, we started uh, flood early warning system uh, in early days. And after that, in, uh, in uh, 2001 to 2010 or 2011, uh, we used uh, watch and warn system for flood early warning. The watch and warn system was um, in place at that time. Uh, this means to the gaze readers, the persons who read the gaze, this is called gaze, they used to read the gaze and inform the people in the lower stream communities. The, the person who, who read the gaze, if the, if the warning level or danger level is reached uh, of that river, uh, the warning level is reached, then they inform the people uh, downstream uh, so that the people in the downstream can be prepared for the evacuation. And uh, these gas leaders were so proud at that time that uh, one here you can see I am not only a gas leader, I am a, a lifesaver life too. He is saying he is so proud to be gas leader that he, he saved the uh, life of many people um, at, at those days. And, but now, now we are uh, we are we have been upgrading upgrading our system, and now we are in the automatic automatic system. We we have uh, installed many um, automatic uh, sensors to sense the water level uh, water level and post that uh, data to our central server here in Kathmandu, and we can use that automatic data so we are we are becoming more robust and more modern um, we are modernizing our system in nepal in recent recent years so this is the uh, station automatic station that are um, in place uh, this green green portion uh, you can see uh, it is uh, uh, water level stations and this blue one is uh, automatic rainfall stations. Uh, they are mostly uh, covered. They have covered all uh, all the country, but in few places in higher Himalayas, yet we have to uh, install uh, some stations, uh, and we are doing that. So, talking about my institution, Department of Hydrology and Metrology. We work in three three tires, or we work in three places. One is in the station to install the um, automatic sensors. Uh, this is called a radar automatic water level sensor, a radar sensor, uh, which have uh, data logger communication modules to communicate in the server, and there are batteries and solar panel uh, for battery. Uh, so we use this this system in the station and in office what we do is we forecast we uh, give the mass sms to the people if 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 warning level or danger level of particular river has reached we give mass sms in monsoon period in um, four four months in the year we um, sit 24 7 uh, to give the to disseminate the information and also, we work in a stakeholder level. Uh, our stakeholder are national disaster risk, uh, national disaster risk reduction authority, authority, uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, National Emergency Operation Center, District Emergency Operation Centers, local disaster management committee, uh, community disaster management committee, and communities. Also, we work there. Uh, we conduct several meetings, trainings uh, for the community there and uh, inform them that if, you, if they get the information in time, uh, so to uh, go to the, uh, to evacuate to the safe place. We ask them to eva evacuate. So mechanism of data transfer. This is the mechanism uh, to show how the data are transferred from uh, from our station to to the central server placed in uh, head head office. 
So data are transfer, transferred by using CDMA and GSM mobile, mobile SIM cards uh, for regular data posting and warning. And in some places, uh, uh, some places which are very remote in high Himalayas, uh, for example, in uh, Glof Lakes, Glacier Lakes uh, of Imza, uh, Chorolpa, and in some remote places where there is no um, connection of uh, this uh, mobile phone, we use Iridium satellite phone uh, for warnings. This is the um, figure to show the mechanism of data transfer. Uh, this is the same figure um, shown in different angle, but uh, so for, for satellite phone, we use only for warning purpose because it is costly, uh, but for regular uh, data posting, we use um, GSM and CDMA uh, phone. So people can view our uh, <coughs> near real-time data by using this www.hydrology.gov.np. Uh, this domain, we can, we can see all the uh, data uh, of uh, water level as well as uh, rainfall. So in this, in this uh, website, this is the home, home page, in this website, we, we can see real-time data, water, river watch, water level, uh, rainfall watch, and other many. There are notice every day we issue bulletin, uh, flood warning bulletins, uh, and warning level, danger level, they can be seen uh, in each and every uh, stations. If we click in stations, we can see the level, current level of that stations. And this is the typical uh, flood bulletins, uh, which is written in uh, Nepalese native language. So, if we click on the rainfall watch uh, there, then we can see the rainfall of various stations uh, directly. And if the warning level and danger level that we have fixed uh, crosses, then uh, we can see in different color. And siren also can be here. If we, if we click on river watch, we can see this type of uh, figure. Uh, for example, uh, this is the Narayani uh, Basin. Uh, river is Narayani River. The uh, place is Devghat uh, District, Chiton District. Uh, the current water level at that time was 9.9. .9. We had fixed the water, uh, water le warning level as 7.3 and danger level at, as 8. So it has crossed the danger level, hence it is uh, shown in um, red color, similar for this. And for this yellow river, uh, yellow color, the river has crossed warning level. And for the normal level, uh, normal water level, it is shown in um, green color. So this is the, this is, uh, this figure shows the early warning dissemination mechanism. This is a formal communication channel for early warning dissemination. Uh, so uh, we can see um, Ministry of Energy, Water Resources and Irrigation, uh, the Department of Hydrology and Metrology comes under this ministry. Uh, and after getting the warning, we disseminate this to uh, MOHA, NUOC, as I described before, DUOC, uh, and DUOC gives uh, the information to local government, local disaster management committee, uh, local emergency operation centers, the, uh, community disaster management community, and early warning task force, and also to the population, mass population, uh, through uh, SMS. Uh, we also have toll free uh, phone, and also uh, by media, by using media, uh, we disseminate uh, this uh, information to, to the people. Okay, talking about the mass SMS to the vulnerable communities, uh, what we have made is we have made different polygons uh, in the whole river basins. And these polygons, uh, there are more than 86 polygons now. Uh, and for example, uh, this is one example of uh, uh, Naraini River and Strapti River. There are one station is here and another is here. For example, if the station of this location 
the warning level or danger level of the river is crossed, then we immediately issue mass SMS to all the people living in these polygons. And if, if the warning level of uh, water at this station is crossed, we immediately issue uh, the mass SMS, bulk SMS to uh, all the people living in these polygons. They are, they are living in uh, flood plain, they are, more, they are vulnerable people. So we issue the um, SMS to them. And the water, it takes four or five um, hours, in some cases two hours, to reach to this community. But before uh, two hours, uh, within 10 minutes, we, we, disseminate the, uh, we disseminate the warning to them so that they can go in the uh, safe place, so that they can evacuate. Uh, that is how uh, we are doing, we are disseminating the warning messages. Hello. Yeah, we are hearing, we are listening to you. Please go on, Brian, sir. Next, next slide is not coming. Something wrong, I think. Listen, sir. Um, uh, can you just? Can I stop and open again? I think it's, you have to share your slide from your black. Yeah, yeah. close the share screen and then open it again. Yeah, can you please share again? Okay, after getting getting the information, uh, people can do their work. Uh, they can go to the safe place. They can remove their valuable uh, belongings uh, to the safe place, uh, and some there are some evacuation centers where they can uh, go and sit for one or two days or four or five hours until the water levels comes down. So I'm I'm uh, at the in in the, in part of my presentation. So we have now uh, the Department of Hydro Hydrology and Metrology is uh, making some uh, programs uh, to enhance flood early warning system. So ongoing programs. There are some programs with, which I like to highlight. Uh, one is flood modeling using MIC 11. Uh, now. Uh, from this year, we are using flood modeling to forecast for three days. Uh, and as pilot, we are we are piloting for Koshi and West Arthi River. Uh, and if uh, by seeing the result of this monsoon, uh, if uh, the result is okay, we can we we are planning to duplicate the same system for other other basins as well. Uh, this is uh, for. Uh, forecasting for three days. Uh, this is the uh, model uh, outputs. Uh, it is giving giving good result. Uh, and another is weather radar. Uh, our plan is to build three weather radar um, for the country. Uh, one, one has already been installed in western part in Surkhet. Uh, two are uh, to be built uh, um, Within one year, within one year, we'll build two. two we'll install two C band with the radar, uh, so that uh, we can we can give the warning uh, more accurately. And another is we are also uh, now we have installed uh, this radio sonde um, uh, equipments in Kirtipur, uh, which um, from which we can we can observe the. Temperature, pressure, and other other um, meteorological information of upper year, 
up to 30, 32 kilometers. Every day we, we are taking this uh, information. And I promet TV studio is also going to be built in our building, uh, building, and it will uh, it will be completed completed within this this fiscal fiscal year, and uh, this is useful for uh, dissemination. And this will be very useful, I think. Uh, so I think that is all uh, from my side. Uh, over to Basanta sir. Thank you, Ryan, sir. Can you just close your uh, uh, screen sharing? Uh, thank you, Ryan, sir. It was a really wonderful presentation and uh, we are very, very pleased to see uh, this development uh, in modern technology development or adaptation of this modern technology in Department of Hydrology and Metrology for better forecasting using different technologies. And uh, when you will complete all this uh, initiative, then maybe this year or next year, it will be a really, really good time so that we can forecast plot more precisely than uh, in the past. So I would like to request you also to see the questions uh, in the chat box for you uh, that uh, our participant had asked. We'll discuss uh, this later on in Q&A session, but uh, you can just go through it. Thank you very much once again. So now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Santos Tahal. Um, so he's a young disaster risk management and climate change professional. So he's a professional so working on this arena for more than 12 years in different sectors. For example, disaster risk management, early warning system, community-based flood early warning system, resilience, resilience measurement, climate change or climate change adaptation, community-based disaster risk reduction, urban risk management, social mobilization, and governance. So, uh, you know, he is basically involved in most of the, you know, these areas that we are really seeking the help from experts. Also, he, is, uh, he has a very sound knowledge on capacity building, both on, of government and non-government stakeholders. And he is heavily involving with communities, with, uh, you know, different tires or different layers of government in Nepal, for example, federal, provincial, and local government. And then he has some more experiences working on transboundary uh, flood early on system between Nepal and India also. So today he's going to present uh, on community-based flood early warning system uh, ground experience. So I will, would like to welcome uh, Mr. Santos. Please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Bosan sir. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever the participants are here. Uh, oh, thank you for the floor, then I'll share my presentation, uh, where I'll share my experience on the ground experience based on the presentation provided by the time, sir. Okay, is my slides visible? Yes, yes, okay. it's visible thank and audible. Thank you. Okay, audible too, thank you. Uh, I want to share the community level experience, what we have been working since a decade uh, in Nepal, uh, on, based only on the flood early warning system and other aspects, as Dr. Prasanta mentioned earlier. Uh, so uh, as Rajendra has already mentioned about uh, the components of flood early, uh, early warning system uh, previously. Now I want to share what we do at the field level. Especially we do the community risk assessment and knowledge. Uh, we do the involving all the community members, identify the hazards in the potential, potential areas. Uh, what and what kind of hazards and are they being affected by the community since uh, 30 years. Uh, after that, we also do about the training and capacity building the uh, uh, risk monitoring and warning. And another is the risk information, communication and dissemination. And another is the capacity building. These are the four components and early warning system. And I will share one by one what we do at the field level. For the risk assessment and knowledge, uh, what we do is that we form the CDMCs and task forces, uh, especially early warning task forces, first aid task forces, search and rescue distribution task forces at the community level, who are being trained uh, uh, regularly, uh, especially in the project implemented areas of different NGOs and INGOs, rather than not throughout the country. 
and after that what we that do we do is identification of hazard and hazard prone areas we do different uh, vulnerability assessment tool for example we call it bca vulnerability capacity assessment or participatory vulnerability capacity assessment or participatory disaster risk assessment different tools are used to identify the hazard and hazard prone areas within the local level and another is that we do the exchange of community and scientific knowledge um, uh, as rajendra sir mentioned already that department of hydrology meteorology uh, disseminates different scientific messages but the scientific messages could not be understandable by the community so they need to understand so we must both scientific knowledge with the community level knowledge so that the community is well prepared another is that we do different kind of awareness level things uh, you can see the pictures where the vulnerability capacity assessment or the social map is being done at the ground level and that is printed uh, in the board and which is kept in the community level board so that the community people can identify which is the safe zone which is the danger zone which is the arable land which is the pasture land and everything which where are the uh, different bridges where are different canals everything can be seen and visible this, this helps to move ahead another is that uh, risk monitoring and uh, warning i think is, this is generally dependent upon the especially the as the rajendra sir mentioned uh, on the government of nepal department of hydrology and meteorology data but we do some kind of monitoring and observation issue in the community also is my slide coming uh I can see only a risk monitoring and warning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I should again share it. Okay. Yeah, I think you have some. Okay, yeah. Yeah, is it visible now yes yes okay this is the police screen okay, okay. Uh, yeah. what we do is that we do we install in coordination with the department hydrology which is the community level uh, fraud has uh, fraud gates that is we call it staff gates but these are being outdated uh, in some of the most perennial rivers in the big rivers in the country which is uh, been replaced by the telemetric system but generally this is also used to calibrate the telemetric system and is that we also install different uh, uh, meteorological stations which gives the temperature uh, other meteorological observations and similarly based on that these observations we as i have earlier mentioned that we the all the data from the field is broadcasted in the hydrology and meteorology website that is hydrology and meteorology uh, which i have shown it two data here uh, similarly there these are the uh, automatic radar station installed by the department of hydrology and meteorology uh, by themselves and also some with the project support just like we development organization also support department of hydrology meteorology to install this kind of systems those so, so that this informations is not only displayed in the website those information will also be displayed at the district level uh, administrative offices the deocs leocs and some work in the community level also so based on this observed the data observations we disseminate the message to, to the community and uh, we where our community cdmcs are formed we ask them to use the toll free number 1155 and other toll free numbers uh, provided by the department of hydrology and meteorology and we also uh, try to establish a good connection between uh, local emergency operation center leoc district emergency operation center doc and national emergency operation center neoc because this is uh, this linkage is seen effective in the project implemented areas only not throughout the country so this is the lacking and the daily bulletin as uh, uh, government shares there's in their website as there in the social sites but the people who do not have access to the internet facilities they are being deprived by this information daily so another is uh, risk communication and dissemination for that we at the community level we this was the risk communication map developed by morsikor in uh, kailali so i took the reference from morsigur where i used to work in morsigur earlier uh, so that we did prepare this kind of communication channel from the community up to the national level so that the, this all the communication channel will be installed at the community places and distributed with the telephone diary and everything so that they can contact the respective stakeholders during any kind of monsoonal disasters similarly after receiving the information from the government we use the community level sirens where the sirens is blowed on 
three levels. So first is one for uh, warning level, another is danger level, another is for evacuation level of the community members. After that, we also use community operated hand mic to aware the community that the flood is coming, take care, prepare yourself and uh, evacuate to the safe places. So we do this kind of things. Similarly, we do uh, where there is no possible of hand mic and siren, also we do community to community visit. So just as uh, uh, we used to work for the transboundary flood early warning systems uh, for where we have to transmit the message from Nepal to India, but there was a telephonic barrier, which, which, which we call international call. For this situation, we used to run the community to community information, which helped to save the life of different people. Another is also that we use community radio uh, through diff at different levels, from national level up to the community level, where the people get messages during, especially during the monsoonal season. And especially the Twitter message and the Facebook messages shared by the government is also shared by different professionals. Uh, as for our uh, knowledge, uh, 30 to 40 percent people are active at the community level on social media. So this also helps to uh, disseminate the message. And another is that web portal, uh, just we development professional use web portal. Uh, other is that the mass SMS sent by the government of Nepal, as Arana earlier mentioned, or the polygon things. Another is door to door visit. Another is the telephonic communications. And the most effective is the office in town streaming communication at the community level. Though the messages are displayed in the website and everything, the river level, the rainfall level, but the messages need to be disseminated to the community. So we do office stream and down streaming community communication. That is very much effective. And there is that guest to guest communications, that manual guest to manual guest, because the telemetric system is not sufficient throughout the country. They are mainly focused on the major rivers rather than the uh, flooding happening in our country is due to the tributary rivers, that is the flash flood rivers, where there is no any telemetric system. And there is that capacity building for response. Uh, we do different capacity building for response. We train early warning task forces and other task forces every year. Uh, another is that we do uh, simulation and drill in the community uh, regularly. And we also, uh, we, use, uh, we used to do the simulation and drill from the triggering from the national level, where Rajan Rasar also was involved in different simulation and drill activities, where we used to trigger from DHM Kathmandu office and up to the community level. So we want to, monitor the functions, what kind of functions at, at all administrative level and community level, how they are functioning. And this was found very much effective. And there is that we support life-saving equipments. As we know that uh, different uh, life-saving uh, equipments, we see rubber board, uh, helmet, jack, uh, life jacket, stretcher, and different med medical equipments. And another is that also we establish a uh, emergency fund at the local level where we provide a seed money and the seed money would, uh, would just for example, I want to give you one example of what, uh, one uh, municipality in the Sudhirpashtim province, where the seed money was provided as 200k Nepalese rupees, but that seed money was increased up to 500k. So that was a heavy increase. Similarly, such kind of seed money at the community level also has been drastically increased, that seeing the importance of uh, that fund during emergencies. And is that we do refresher training and support to government graduates uh, in coordination with the government. Another is that the effective mechanism was the community exposure visit from community to community. We do these things. And is that establishment of community based early warning technology. For example, what does, do you mean by early warning technology? Means, uh, as the DSM uh, web portal shows that, that this is the danger level at the website level, but at the community level, how can it be displayed? So we install a not normal display board as we as we Nepalese colleagues are familiar with that the red kind of radar board which we see in different levels such kind of boards boards are installed at the community level and that is linked to the website and the automatic siren goes in the field and the siren gets up to two to three kilometers distance so this kind of uh, we do at the community level and another is that we do uh, construction of community safe shelters at the field to evacuate the people and this has been also found very much effective. I want to give you one example of one community safe shelter which uh, where I was involved is constructed in Sira municipality where we provide uh, the matching funding was 70, uh, 80, 20, 80 from the project, 20 from the government. But later on in the next year, all the five, five such kind of safe shelters were replicated by the government. So this can be a good thing for the replication and knowing the importance. So another is the challenges. Uh, 
So main challenge is that the trickle down of information from federal level to up to community level. As I mentioned earlier, uh, that the information is generated through the telemetry system at the federal level, but channeling at the community level is very much difficult. Though the channeling is uh, found good uh, where we have established community disaster management committee and other things at the field level, but where there is no any community disaster management committee and, and uh, no other task forces, so channeling those information up to the community level is very much difficult in this situation. Analysis that provide sufficient lead time to the communities. Uh, we pro uh, providing the lead time to the community, sufficient lead time to the community is uh, another great challenge uh, we are facing here. Uh, because uh, somewhere we get the lead time of one hour, somewhere we, we get the lead time of just 30 minutes, or somewhere we get the lead time of uh, maybe four hours or seven hours. So this is happening at the field level. So we need to increase the lead time of the communities. Uh, another is that preparation of early warning and early action protocols. Uh, though at national level, some of the protocols have been mentioned, but at the district level, in some of the districts, we have seen some examples of preparing some early warning and early protocols, but this is not happening uh, at all field levels. So another is that the forecast based early warning systems needs to be initiated. As I mentioned that uh, three, uh, three days forecast has helped a lot because uh, as they have forecasted uh, um, Friday that from Monday after uh, Monday, evening, there is a heavy forecast rainfall forecasted for four days. So this kind of three days forecast needs to be tested that will help to save the life of the community people. And more investment is required from the preparedness level instead of response, because as though we have been shifted from the disaster management act, every clearly mentioned about the disaster management cycle, but investment on preparedness is a bit reluctant by the, especially at the local level. So there is an institutional setup of Department of Hydrology at provincial and local level is uh, very much uh, required because as far as I know, currently uh, DHM has only more for, for river basin offices and some, some of the field offices, but that is not sufficient. We need to increase coordinating with the federal government that, that the offices should be established at the all levels so that it can have a regular communications and coordinations. And adoption of new uh, and emerging technologies, as Ryan has already mentioned about the uh, radar system. Um, so similar such kind of system may not be possible, but the, I want to emphasize here is about the telemetric system, especially in the flash flood rivers and other rivers. A uh, linkage between scientific technologies with the community-based early warning system. This is very much lacking here. Oh my, can you see my slide? Next slide is not coming. It's not changing. I think you have to do it again. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'll do it again. Maybe it's because of heavy file. Yeah. Heavy file, maybe. Yeah. Now, is it visible? Uh, it's coming, it's coming. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, another is that the multi hazard only warning systems needs to be uh, emphasized because, in case of our country, we only focus on hydromet hazards only and not other hazards. So, multi hazard only warning system is uh, required to save the life of the community people. Uh, especially, another is the strength coordination and collaboration between national and international government uh, is required uh, also because, especially for the uh, flood prone areas in our Torai districts, are all 22 districts are aligned with the Indian government border where the government has, uh, Indian government has established a uh, dam in the Indian river in the Indian side due to that and also the construction of uh, roads at the border side which has uh, obstructed the river flowing down. So these are also other things. And it is that not only the all the technologies but also we need to link the flood hazards with the resident livelihood options. Just as an example, promoting the flood resident crops uh, or drought resident crops or this kind of resident livelihood things should be uh, considered. And there is that another important thing is that uh, disaster risk financing. Disaster risk financing needs to be ensured. This is a very emerging in the throughout the world. And there is that implementation of safety net mechanism is also lacking, especially safety net mechanisms with the insurance of life. Uh, life is going, the what non life insurance also. And lack of sufficient fund for repair and maintenance of structure and systems at field level established by the DHM as well as by the development organizations. 
because since their projects gets handover and they hand over to the government and the government does not have resources we understand the current situation that government does not have resources to this things so this is my last slide way forward uh, the only one system we are, which we are focusing is it's not jc focused because uh, especially i want to give you an, one example of that uh, the children at the field level they are unaware the, the youth are unaware about the sms system especially the disabled people or uh, the uh, visually impaired people are not being regularly informed so these are the most vulnerable groups that needs to be in, in clearly identified and the early warning system which we are now developing uh, which we are now practicing is mostly focused to men not women so the uh, other jc components should be increased and increment in geographical coverage of telemetry station of dsm which i have already highlighted earlier where we development organizations are eager to work with government for this understanding the importance of early warning system at all levels of government and concerned stakeholders because uh, as we know that the early warning because the people are thinking that the government issues a weather forecast but uh, when it says rain it, 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 the heavy sunlight it was uh, sunlight was seen so this kind of things has been minimized since last 3 4 years where due to the good mass sms system on the government have said more than 300k people in 2019 only so this kind of things needs to be increased and in, another is increment in lead and lag time of the systems which we establish and establishment and strengthening of community institutions from the concerned government stakeholders as the disaster management act 2017 has clearly mentioned about the community disaster management committee should be formed at it at its government level at its local level but these are being formed only at the project where the development organizations are doing not in all the community level so if this needs to be emphasized the community based early warning system would be help easier to save the life of the people and properties of the people and there is the collaboration between all stakeholders from the community up to regional level is required because we generally depend upon the forecast from rams forecast from saskop uh, but uh, some kind of effective coordination and collaboration is lacking as a public view which i am saying i think rams sir may have different option uh, another is that children and youth should be focused we uh, i work in world vision just in nepal where we are a child focus organization and youth focus organization but those people are being neglected but we world vision follows about the child uh, emphasize the child and youth but other we think we do not have been focused on child and youth so child and youth needs to be ensured and there is that in investment from development partners on cv fuse is very much important rather than instead of software hardware components also needs to be ensured from the development organization so that it will help the government to disseminate the message widely another is that digitization of vulnerability and capacity assessment which i talked to you about earlier about the bca pbca but that we are doing manually so if we develop of such kind of uh, digitized system that will help us to be replicated throughout the uh, throughout the country that uh, the local government will help to identify that this community are vulnerable this household are vulnerable i want to give you one example we are now uh, developing one proposal on household disaster preparedness plan which is not practiced uh, which uh, as per my knowledge it is not practiced anywhere in any parts of the country or some some parts of the world too so if we can i think so for example there are 500 household in one ward of the um, uh, one municipalities and if we can categorize those, those household from uh, high risk medium risk and low risk so that the government uh, in case of any disaster happens the government will be help us to easily identify the community people at the field who are affected by the disaster so if we do this kind of things that will because this 21st century is digital century so this will help us to finally save i want to again emphasize preparedness save lives thank you any questions queries are welcome thank you preparedness save lives thank you santoshi for your uh, excellent presentation fantastic and this is the view that uh, we wanted to hear from uh the experts working in development organization and your experience in different uh past experience in previous organization and now in world vision international uh, is really pinpointing what is the reach i mean the problems and suggestions or mitigation or preparedness approaches that we are you are doing uh to the field directly and that a fantastic presentation 
and thank you very much. And I would like to request you also to see the, some of the questions that directly uh, related to you. I will come to you one by one. Uh, and thank you once again. So now uh, we will start our uh, Q&A session. And I see that lots of questions. Uh, I can see the lots of questions here uh, from different participant, both in Zoom chat box and in Facebook. First, I yeah, there are many questions uh, to both part, uh, presenters, but first I want to come to Rajendra sir. Rajan sir, are you there? Yes, yes, Rajendra sir. Okay, so first I would like to take a question from Thakur Sarma sir. He has asked two questions to you directly. The first question is, what is the total annual rainfall, long-term average for four months? For example, from June to September, and its correlation to the disaster in the particular basin or sub basin. And another question from uh, Thakur sir directly to you, Ryan sir, is our hydrological or, or hydrometric station density that DHM is, is, has established is as per the WMA standard? I would like to hear your sweet and short answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Basan sir. Thank you, Thakur sir, for your question. Uh, so, second question, from second question, I'd like to start. Uh, yes, yes, we have uh, established uh, the density network of uh, network uh, according to WMO standard, except in, uh, in few um, places in the higher Himalayan, in western part, uh, which we are, we are installing uh, this year. Mm, and coming to another question, uh, so, uh, what was the another question? I forgot. The, the first question, you answered the first. second one. The first question was, what is the total annual rainfall, for example, okay. long-term average of four months from June to September, and its correlation to the disaster in the particular basin and sub-basins? Okay, so talking about the um, uh, average rainfall, uh, whole average rainfall of the country does not uh, have a relation with uh, with uh, this uh, flooding or landslide. But for particular basins, uh, the rainfall of particular basins and sub basin, it has directly uh, it is directly linked with uh, flooding. And in the case of Nepal, uh, the average rainfall of some basin is. Uh, 1800 millimeter, 20, 2000 per year, and in some basin it is less than 200 millimeter. So uh, we have to work separately for each basin. Uh, in that case, the, the rainfall is directly linked with a flood, obviously. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, I would like to take one question from Facebook, our live page, uh, from Krishna Karki, madam. So I think she is asking to you, Rajendra sir, what is the linkage with the provincial level emergency operating centers about this flood uh, forecast or flood early warning system? Yeah. Uh, earlier, we, we had a linkage with a district emergency operation center and national emergency operation center. But for province emergency operation center, in some province, they have, they have um, made that center functioning, uh, but in some uh, province, uh, they are in the process of uh, making the institution. Uh, uh, probably from next year, uh, we, we will have uh, close uh, contact with them. Uh, but now, as per uh, this year, uh, we are, uh, uh, we are connect connected with some, some of the province emergency operation center, but not all. We, we give information to them and they will uh, they will give that information to district and local level. That is the linkage. Yes, thank you. And uh, I think uh, these two questions are also directly related to you. Uh, one question from Hari Saran Kharka. Uh, so the question is why real time data and river was data are different in same basin? Uh, 
uh, it, in our website or where? I think he, he means in our website. Uh, yes, I think so. That may be because now we are, uh, we are maintaining, we are taking all the information data in another platform. We are shifting the data in another platform. That is why in some cases it may be, uh, but uh, it is not permanent. Uh, it will be resolved soon. Okay, thank you. And from Anuj Tiwari to you, Rainda sir, how do you determine in which river early warning system should be installed? Uh, talking about the Nepalese rivers, uh, for big, bigger and medium type of river, uh, every, in every river we should uh, keep install the um, uh, and we are doing, we are working on it. We are almost, uh, we have installed in all big and uh, medium type of rivers, but for small flashy flood rivers, uh, it depends upon uh, the community demand and local local government demand. Where to okay. Yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, another question um, from Leon Oracha. So the question is the DPSR, DPSIR, driver pressure state impact and response model of intervention. Framework is a new method to re assess the risks and vulnerability, which can be combined with disaster analysis and resilient information uh, assessment. So have you done this kind of uh, analysis or assessment for your early warning system or not, Ryan, sir? Uh, this uh, driver pressure state impact and response model for intervention. Uh, new model to be. No, we have not, uh, we have not uh, worked particularly on this, uh, this what he pointed out, but uh, as, as I get this information, we'll work, we'll see what we can do. Okay, so another question again uh, for early warning from Pavitra Guru. So the question is how this early warning effectively working in the field? So what is the effectiveness of the early warning? And uh, so we are also facing problem nowadays. Uh, maybe there's a forecast for next week, uh, there will be a high rainfall in some, country, in some part of the country. So can you claim with the evidence that people are aware and evacuated by using early warning system? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can claim that because in, um, in the western part, in Bake Bardia, and also in the eastern part, Konkai Bainachuli Basin and Koshi Basins, the people, people are so enthusiastic to know the level of a river at upper stream that they are, they are continuously contact, contacting us in 1155 uh, phone number, toll free number. And when they get the information, uh, they, the local community, they go to the uh, safe place. And every time and now and then they are contacting if uh, the warning level has crossed or not. Um, and CDO uh, officers and other local, local political uh, personalities, persons also, they are contacting with us. Uh, so from this, we can see that uh, it, it has been effective and also we give information through mass SMS uh, last year we gave more than uh, 5 billion mass SMS to the people and uh, while we we go in the field they, they are uh, they are satisfied I think. yes um, thank you very much for wonderful answers and explanation and similar with that um, uh, Dini uh, from Mercy Corps asks that what are the plans for redundancy of this GPRS based data transmission uh, during the monsoon time? Because this network sometimes very weak in some part of uh, the river basin. So how are you going to you know, uh, conduct these things? Uh, okay, we are uh, in collaboration with the NTC and NCL. Uh, there is a problem we try to fix uh, immediately. If not, we have alternate uh, uh, contingency plan also. We, uh, we call the uh, personnel at uh, District Emergency Operation Center to disseminate uh, the information uh, from there uh, via uh, television or radio uh, or uh, other other possible channels. If, if yeah. Yes, thank you. And uh, another colleague, uh, uh, Abdul Rahim, 
So he is asking due such early warnings have risk mitigation result for flash flood affected communities also, or is only for perennial rebel? Uh, what I described uh, in my previous uh, session was uh, mostly of the perennial uh, type of rivers. But for flash flood river, uh, this type of mechanism by by uh, measuring the coming, it is it is too. Uh, short uh, lead time is very short so it, it is uh, dif difficult so what we do is we uh, measure the rainfall or we use the forecasted rainfall uh, to uh, disseminate to um, warn them in in such type of flash flood river we we are using the data of uh, forecast uh, forecast uh, rainfall data for three days uh, we use that data and inform uh, that is what now uh, yeah Yes, thank you. Another question from Sami Dungal. So we are always hearing about this plus uh, flood early warning system, but every year we feel we face the destruction. So are we lacking early warning system effectiveness in the Nepal with sustainable infrastructure in disaster forming areas? Uh, so in every every program, uh, there, there are rooms of improvement. Uh, we are we are using these systems since the last five or uh, six years, and we are improving every uh, every year. We are improving um, them, uh, and but uh, but uh, where we have installed, where we have um, this system, the people people are getting getting the information, and the loss of life is uh, remarkably reduced. But uh, but uh, this uh, flood, uh, if it comes along with a landslide, uh, then then it is difficult for us because uh, landslide is another another issue, uh, and we have to work. Uh, I think we have to work closely with uh, with, uh, with other institutions and make one uh, concrete type of task force work on the landslide and uh, flow and and debris flow. Uh, that is that is the point. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, the, Mm. Yeah, another question from Kilan Abdahal. So he's asking, what is the status and progress of GrowMet program, which high, which was started from Department of Hydrology and Meteorology? Uh, I didn't understand this. This may be, I think, AgroMet program. GrowMet yeah. program. I think AgroMet. Yeah, I think AgroMet. Yeah. For AgroMet program, we are we are in close uh, collaboration with uh, with uh, NARC and uh, Ministry of uh, this Agriculture. Uh, and there is one separate section uh, to look at the acromet and uh, we have uh, many programs to direct which, uh, directly link with uh, farmers uh, yeah we are working on that okay thank you so i think there is another similar questions um, so when uh, from nivesh resta are we working this early warning system for flash flood also in uh, Prithivi Highway, for example, Muglin, Nangat Highway, or something, we are always facing the problems. Yeah, we, we give information uh, um, before three days before that uh, uh, there is big system uh, is coming on in, uh, in Nepal, and, uh, and a certain part of Nepal will get heavy rainfall. Uh, that is what we are doing for flash flood. Uh, talking about the Muglin, Nangat Highway, as that type of flood uh, we, we we give information but uh, but uh, it is it is beyond our uh, we cannot do anything for such, such things thank you i think uh, this will be a last question before i come back to you later and then i'll jump to santoshi so uh, you know how do you see the engagement of ngos collaborating with department of hydrology and metrology to enhance the uh, flood risk management, for example, how you use this uh, SAS proof forecast for this monsoon or something like that. Can you explain a little bit on that? Yeah, we, we work with uh, uh, various countries and various uh, international institutions, local INGOs, NGOs uh, in this, uh, this flood warning system for SAS scope and also RIMES. There is one. Uh, one institution in Thailand is called Rhymes, and we use the their data also 
uh, forecasted data and for the local uh, NGOs, uh, we work closely with them in field, le field level as, uh, as Santos uh, sir, uh, pointed out. Uh, the Department of Hydrology and Metrology cannot reach uh, in the uh, local community level, uh, but uh, uh, those NGOs, they have programs there and we work in uh, um, direct collaboration. Uh, early warning system is uh, multi stakeholder type of thing. So we work with all, all, all stakeholders. Thank you, Rensar. I'll come to you, come back to you later. Uh, thank you for excellent explanation. Uh, Santoshi, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So I'll take a question for you directly from Facebook. So Mandira Madam is asking. Uh, how do we outscale the community-based program to the other areas? The first question uh, for Santoshi and the similar question from, uh, yeah, that is the question for another for okay. our energy. Can you just address that? Thank you. Uh, outscaling of uh, uh, the uh, proven community-based early warning system, I think Mandira Bamsi is from Isimur. Uh, uh, if she's from Isimur, then they have established a good early warning system in Ratu River. Uh, but that cannot be that have not been replicated in other parts of the river uh, due to lack of more funding. Uh, so we development organizations we depend upon funding. Uh, but if the government uh, owns the uh, things, whatever we have been uh, the development organization have been done, uh, then that would be the sustainable things in the future. But I don't know. It's up to Rajan and DSM uh, that they are, they have always been facing the problem of funding challenges from Ministry of Finance to make sustainability of the intervention what we do. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Santoshi. So another question from Zoom to from Thakur sir. Yes. What about the flood insurance for the people that are prone to the flood every year? So have you started any flood insurance program from community? Yep. Yeah, we, we, we developed, as I, as I was involved in different or, other organizations earlier and in, even in World Vision, uh, we have in, uh, initiated the insurance mechanism, which has been very successful, especially in the livestock sector, because uh, those some of the incidents happen uh, in immediate after insurance of uh, uh, one uh, buffalo was done insurance and after one week, the buffalo died and the people got 100k Netflix rupees. So this kind of uh, things was uh, help for the uh, uh, risk transfer the things. So we have initiated insurance and that has been very successful, but only in Thank the project you. implemented areas. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Santoshi. Another question from Facebook. Uh, so Sandeep Pradhan is asking, uh, are the early warning systems only installed by the sole effort of DHM or any other INGOs that have such equipment? The first question and the second one is, after the news being disseminated to the community, had followed the early, early warning preparedness steps in Nepal? Yeah, first of all, the uh, systems which have been installed in different parts of the country are in close coordination with the DHM, as Rajendra sir clearly knows about that, well, because we generally, the WMD organization can on, cannot only go and install and leave the things. We need a sustainability. So all the systems which, are, as for my knowledge, 95% of the systems has been installed in coordination with the government. And there is, uh, that, that, that's the first part of the question. And what is the second part? Part of the... Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Sandeep. Yes, second is so when uh, there's early warning system, in, uh, yeah, yeah, preparedness, yeah, the I information, yeah, preparedness, yes, yeah. I think, uh, as again, I emphasize, uh, the uh, where we development organization have established the community, management community, and task forces, the preparedness actions and uh, have been already been trained to them with the preparedness materials, so that is very much effective in the project areas. Thank you. Okay. So another question uh, from Samir Dungil that he's asking, are disaster, uh, decree, are disaster in decreasing trend or decreasing proportional with the various management practices prompt in Nepal? So after the you know, management uh, practices, are disaster are, uh, decreasing or not? Yeah, uh, I cannot say that disaster are decreasing or increasing because disaster may be natural, uh, anthropogenic, uh, but the loss from the disaster, especially in the flood early warning system, have been decreasing in the past compared to past five years. Okay, thank you. So another question for you uh, from a colleague from UK, Yong Fang Sen. 
So she's asking, uh, could you explain further how do we involve children and youth in early warning system? Is the training included in the edu ed education curriculum? Uh, yeah, there is a there is a, a, a one comprehensive school safety package we call it that is developed by the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. Uh, Education, Science and Technology. You can find that in the web portal also. And based on that comprehensive school safety package, we developed the SBDRM, School-Based Community Disaster Risk Management Plan, where all the children and youth are involved. And that plan is being integrated into the local government plan, especially we call it LDCRP, Local Disaster Climate Resistance Plan. And that, uh, that uh, up to the local level, but uh, from the local level up to the district and the federal and provincial and federal, we have not been integrated till now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Another question from Facebook. Uh, in Facebook, uh, from Gaurav Pante to Santosi, how are the evacuation centers used by the community in other seasons except monsoon? Were they used uh, as a quarantine center for COVID-19? Uh, I don't know what are they used for quarantine centers or not. But the community centers which we have established at the community level are of good examples. Uh, where but they have been used as they are using as a multi-purpose safe shelter. During the flooding seasons, they go and take the people or they take the livestock or take the belongings and evacuate during the flooding seasons. But in, uh, rather than in uh, outside of flooding seasons, they use as a, for example, different organizing the functions, organizing the meetings, organizing the workshops. Where uh, uh, I want to say what um, some of the colleagues are maybe here. I have a, I had a dream house which was prepared in. Uh, $15,000, not more than that. Uh, but that house uh, has um, sustained in such a way that that cannot be imagined. I think person, so you also have sometimes visited that house. That is my dream house. Such kind of sex shelter would be very much effective, uh, are very much effective in our country. Thank you. So another question from Saros Chakur from Marshikovs. Yes. So, see, how do you see disaster risk financing in the context of Nepal and its relevancy and importance? Yeah, there is a great relevance of disaster risk financing in our country, which some of the development organizations has been practicing. And similarly, uh, NDRRMA working, is working with the World Bank for preparing a disaster risk financing guideline, uh, which will be soon out in two to three, four months. And that will help us, uh, the government will establish the policy and protocols and institutions. So disaster risk financing is practiced uh, successfully throughout the world and in some five to 10% in the country also. So disaster risk financing is very successful. Thank you. Yeah, another question uh, in Facebook, I think uh, Sramika Rijal, uh, she is not yep. uh, directing to anyone, but I think Santoshi can answer this question. Yep. Um, so, uh, once people became aware of flood because of early warning system, how does evacuation takes place? Where they stay? How they are dealing with the disaster crisis? Any success and failure incident from latest flood scenarios? Okay, thank you, Samika. I think she may be my colleague. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's a good question. Uh, I cannot give you the uh, I have not uh, collected the current flooding examples, but at the, there is a good example in the past where the community has developed the community disaster risk management plan, where everything is mentioned. As you, you may be aware that as I saw in the first picture in my presentation, we use a hazard and social map. Based on that map, all the community people are trained, are made aware, and they follow those uh, uh, evacuation plans, safety routes, all everything accordingly. So that has been very successful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Santoshi. Uh, maybe I'll come you later on, but I want to sure. invite Rajendra sir. Uh, Ransar, are you there? Yes, yes. So there's uh, one question from Mandira Swest, madam, in Facebook. So she's asking, the early warning provided by DHM has provided to be very effective in terms of minimization of loss of lives. How can we further improve the early warning in terms of impact-based forecasting? Okay. So in impact-based forecasting, talking about impact-based forecasting, <clears throat> now, uh, Department of Hydrology and Metrology is uh, trying to make uh, the inundation uh, maps and flood, um, flood hazard maps of uh, various uh, basins. So once that map will be prepared, we'll uh, give emphasis on the uh, most vulnerable, vulnerable areas, vulnerable people. Uh, 
in which the impact is more in that that's it, that is how we are we are working now thank you uh, from uh, madhusudan kaist uh, again in facebook is there any real real time data sharing facilities by sms or alarm to the local community yes we as i mentioned in my presentation we give information uh, to all the people living in the particular uh, basin in which the water level of that um, that basin that river is uh, below is above uh, warning level or danger level so we have yes we have provision of uh, mass bulk sms thank you so another question from rupendra basnet uh so the question is uh just like to point out on one picture from the last week regarding information dissemination and quick people response of narayana river narangat how we are thinking to tackle such demerits in future uh i think he is uh, talking about that uh, bridge bridge yeah i think so i think so also uh so uh, at that time uh, our the station uh, was showing uh, above warning level the uh, maybe above danger level uh, at that time the people get information uh, about uh, uh, the uh, narayan river uh, is uh, is uh, level of the narayan river has crossed the warning level so people should go uh, to the uh, to safe place but i don't know why they they went in the, Uh, in uh, bridge to see the uh, river maybe local government or uh, uh, the stakeholder at that uh, naran naran ghat should work on it uh, our our task is to give information uh, and uh, all all stakeholders should work in their respective areas okay uh, thank you ran sir uh, there is one actually two questions again from leonora cha so the question is for an any particular flood incident how do we decide on capturing the data for example which tool to select which tool do you use the first question is that and the second one is on these websites is there any way to collect incident precipitation in the watershed or for example upstream of uh, the area of interest yes so Uh, to get the precipitation data um, historical precipitation data uh, we cannot uh, get from website uh, we have to um, come to the department of geology and meteorology to get that data and wh what was what was first question uh, for any particular for flood incident how do we decide on capturing the data from which tool do you use so uh, for for the historical data we we have another program uh, called uh, we have another another program uh, we extract data from that program and it is not uh, free for um, for uh, all people but for flood data um, uh, it is free for, okay. for uh, water level data it is free we can call, everyone can call, call it So another question um, from Niranjan Swasta. So asking, uh, what would you say our country's status regarding the early warning plus flood study due to the climate change impact? Impact. Okay. So early warning status of early warning for flood. I think it is it is better. It is going good. But for other hazards like landslide, flash. Uh, landslide debris flow uh, we have to work uh, a little uh, um, a bit more um, that is what uh, that is my comment okay, okay thank you from uh, i think we are uh, coming here to the end so saros thakur from marshikov second asking to you how can you share the progress of early warning system through the irrigation department that i heard they are installing telemetric stations also uh, no i think uh, that uh, irrigation department ha have got one uh, big project for uh, telemetry station installation uh, they are they are working with us we, we are involved in that okay so uh, collaboratively for installation uh, dhm work although the project is um, 
in uh, Department of Irrigation for this part, installation part, we are working. So one uh, last but not least question for Ryan sir uh, from Dharamu Preeti, uh, from Factory Election, I think from Facebook. So he's asking what makes delay to establish cap system in Nepal and why by when DHM can instance CAP system? Uh, so for cap system, uh, we, are, we are working on it. Uh, we, ha we have uh, uh, already, Mm, uh, we have got uh, one work, hydromet work, work station, that is a program. Uh, and in that program, uh, CAP is in, in built in that program. And uh, uh, Meteo France is, uh, is helping us um, in that. In that. Uh, so the DHM is in collaboration with NDIRRMA also um, for this CAP, CAP work. Okay, thank you, uh, Ryan, sir. Thank you for your explanation. Uh, I will request you at the end to give some closing remarks, but now I would like to request uh, Santosh Ji. Are you there? Yes, please, I'm here. Okay, so the question for you uh, from Sandeep Pradhan, are the subsurface level of aquifer research and mapping equally important for the flood assessment as above the ground level study. So underground level study, uh, okay, my question is, do Nepal government conduct such research on subsurface level and incorporate its output to get maximum benefit in the early warning system? So it's all about the groundwater level measurement for early warning system. Do you have any experience on it? No, no I do not have any experience on this, apologies. Uh, Ryan, sir, do you have anything related to that, the measurement of groundwater table for uh, so into incorporating this information to the early warning system? Uh, early warning? Until, until now, we have not uh, worked on it, uh, but in the future, uh, we can, we can work collaboratively uh, with uh, groundwater. Yeah. Thank you. So, Santos, for Santos' question, uh, from Dharam Mukherjee, sir, what approach did you apply to integrate the flood early on system with local government? What challenges you face to work with the local government? Yeah, there is a great challenges of uh, integrating the flood early on system with the local government. But if we go and talk and influence and uh, regularly visit and tell them about the importance of the flood early warning system, that would be more sustainable. And especially we, what we practice is that we practice on developing the guidelines and endorsement from the local government council that helped a lot uh, to make it sustainable. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think uh, we are, and there's a one last question for anybody can answer. Santos here, Ryan Raji, from Amrit Marasini. Uh, after the Disaster Risks and Management Act 2074, so 2017 in uh, AD, inter introduction, what kind of work it has been doing? currently doing as of 2077, has it made response or pre-disaster work and the cooperation of various level of calm and work parts together? So question is how this system is working after this, G, after this DRR, NDRRMA Act? Uh, I think after NDM Act, uh, the system has been working effectively as per my experience because there was a big lack of coordination and everything in the past. But uh, as for the federal structure and as for the DM Act, uh, the, it is working properly. And uh, to see the results, we need to wait more in future because NDRMA has just established eight months earlier. So now only we cannot judge. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for your uh, excellent uh, presentation and uh, uh, Q&A session. Santoshi, do you want to say any final words? Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Bosan sir. Uh, thank you, Ryan sir, good for And thank you, all the participants, for your queries and questions. Hope I could answer all your questions. Uh, finally, what we want to say, is, uh, I want to say you is that uh, let's work collaboratively with the government. Let's not work solely uh, so that, again, I say preparedness saves lives. Thank you. Um, thank you, Santoshi. Uh, Ryan sir, do you want to say some final words? Uh, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, uh, for for this uh, for inviting me in this uh, program uh, for the questions 
uh, and everything. So uh, one thing I would like to say is that uh, early warning system is a multi-stakeholder system. So all the stakeholder working in this field, um, we should work uh, mutually so, the, so that the effectiveness of this system will be uh, better. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ryan Dasar, for your excellent presentation and wonderful answers uh, during Q&A session. So before I end the program, I would like to share one uh, information for tomorrow's session. So there is another webinar for tomorrow is uh, Geoscience for Sustainable Development, which will be presented by uh, Dr. Upendra Barao, where and when did the Eurasia, India Eurasia collision take place. Uh, it will be live uh, in Facebook also 8 p.m. Nepal time in the evening. So if you are interested, uh, you can join. So there is a scan code. And so we have already posted, IHR already posted information in its uh, social networking sites also. So thank you very much. And uh, so thank you uh, once again for uh, presenting such a wonderful uh, information and experience of both of experts. And thank you, uh, Suresh Gautam, Executive Director of Institute uh, of Himalayan Risk Reduction for providing me opportunity to moderate this session. I really enjoyed it. I think we uh, address all the questions uh, that were raised in both in Facebook and uh, Zoom. If not, then please write to us then we'll ask uh, uh, experts again to reply, uh, questions and answers. Uh, you can directly uh, send to them and to me also, or to Suraj Gautam. And uh, it's a wonderful session. Thank you very much. Now over to Sur uh, Suraj Gautam. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Basant Basant, for the excellent moderation and making this webinar uh, environment uh, more lively. So it is also always a pleasure hearing from you. We'd like to thank uh, Rajendra sir for the wonderful review of the works that has been uh, going on with DHM. It was really wonderful to see the development of modern technologies in DHM for the uh, better forecasting, especially the uh, uh, weather radar radio sonde in Kirtipur and Hydromet uh, TV studio. Th these works seems really impressive. So hope to see it uh, sooner. And with these advancements in technologies uh, followed by sound implementation, I believe we can prepare a resilient community and thus prepare for the uh, upcoming hazards, uh, disasters. So the key mantra is the collaborations and coordination. Similarly, we'd also like to thank uh, Santos Dahal sir for sharing us with some field experiences and case studies of different parts of the country. Uh, the need of DHM at provincial level, local level and essence of multi-hazard audio warning system uh, was also highlighted uh, along with the existing challenges. The Q&A session was also really informative uh, with a quite a lot of number of quality questions. Uh, we tried our best uh, to address all of these questions from our Facebook uh, page live and also from the Zoom chat box. In case if you have any further queries, as Dr. Basanta has also mentioned, you can mail us at info at inhrr.org. Uh, I would also like to convey my big thanks to all of our organizing team speakers uh, our session moderator, our distinguished guest, and all the participants who attended this session. The session was really informative and interactive. Uh, we'll be sharing the recorded session of, uh, on our YouTube channel, and the links will be forwarded to the registered email. Uh, we have a long way to go, and we'll be happy to collaborate and coordinate with the number of organizations to aim for sustainable risk reduction. We'd also like to mention that Institute of Himalayan Risk Reduction will be more than happy to collaborate and organize this kind of relevant webinars in the days to come. So with this, I would like to sign up from our session for today. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you once again. Namaste.